Hey everyone, this is Captain Kyle. I'm here at Monster Mania Con. I'm here with talented actor Michael Trainer. How are you doing today? I'm well, man. I'm well. Thank you for having me here. Hey, my pleasure. So, how are you enjoying Monster Mania Con? Oh, it's full of monsters and full of mania, so it's everything you'd want. It fulfills on the promise of the title, man. Come out and uh, join the fun next time you can. Definitely not false advertising is what you'd say. No, 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 no. That, all the monsters were guaranteed and the mania is just like a bonus. Yeah, I've seen a lot of monsters. <laughs> so anyway, how many cons do you usually go to? Uh, it depends. I try and fit it in when I can in my schedule. It's always a, a, a genuine delight to kind of come out there and meet the fans and meet people who want to express how much they hated my character for such a long time. And they do it with these wonderful smiles on their faces because the show just has a great impact on folks, you know? And it's a lovely thing to be a part of that and to be reminded of what little role I played in the big oeuvre of uh, Walking Deadland. Do you get up, you say they talk to you like they hate you, they hated your character, they hated your conflicts with Glenn. Um, anyone like really look serious about it? Uh, th not, not so recently. Those who are caught up on the show understand the kind of the, the full story of Nicholas. And there's a little bit of regret and sadness even, um, some compassion for the guy. Uh, but during the thick of it, uh, in the break between season five and season six, there was a huge heap of animosity. And people would just come up to me just seething and say, like, I'd, 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 have, I'd have shot your ass in the woods. Or, like, that Glenn was stupid. You know, you deserve to have a bullet in your head. And little did they know they were prophetic because Nicholas got a bullet in his head. So, yeah. And little they know that you're an actor and you don't write the story. You play the part. So it's not your fault. Oh, no, I improvised everything. It was all my design. It was all oh. my choice. Yeah. So uh, the writers would send these things called scripts. And uh, Stephen and I would be like, it's a suggestion. We'd toss those in the woods and then just start punching each other. Oh, really? Yeah. This, is, this is breaking news. Breaking news the writers of The Walking Dead have no impact. It's all him <laughs> and, and Stephen. Yeah, yeah. We really... It's, uh, <laughs> they couldn't be farther from the truth. Um, <laughs> everything is so meticulously planned out, beautifully so, that all we have to do is just show up and say the words and kind of ride the emotional roller coaster they've set up for us. And you guys get some, I think, pretty darn compelling television out of that. So, Well, I think so. Yeah, yeah if you think so, then and it is. There it is. You're a captain. You know it. Something like that. Totally. How much improvisation do they allow it, or do you have to always read exactly as written in the script? Uh, I'll be very honest. I am normally quite brazen with scripts, and I feel free to improvise or add things as they come along. But it's really true to see a script page that is just so beautifully orchestrated. I, I never felt a need to. I'm sure that if there was... Uh, a desire to change things or to ask questions of the writers. They were always very approachable and open to conversations. Because I'd have questions sometimes, never suggestions. Um, so I say this to, to speak to the power of, of how well-crafted the story is. Those guys in their writer's room in Los Angeles, thousands and thousands of miles away from the, 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 the set of Sonoya, were able to really plan what was going to happen so well that I didn't want to improvise, you know? Oh, no, that's great to hear. Mm -hmm. So, getting back to the convention circuit, you look around and you see people in costume. Mm -hmm. You've probably seen me in costume sometimes, like, only half see you because I only have one eye. Right. What do you think about these cosplayers? I think it's awesome. I mean, it's kind of fantastic. It's, it's that spirit of dress-up that you had when you were a kid, but now you have the money to actually like go and get the costume and to be a part of it. And I think it's a wonderful reflection of being passionate about something. That's what I think these cons are. And what's really great about it is the passion that it, it captures of the fan base for a particular genre or a particular show or just to kind of be it for a second. And, and the glee, it's kind of a generous thing also because we see you guys, you know, we're here behind our booths and, and we're, we're saying hello to the fans who come to us, but oftentimes you guys are out wandering around just adding an atmosphere of celebration. And you, you, you guys are so generous with your time and you, you pose and you get involved in it and I've seen you guys start staging things. And, you know, when I can, I'm wandering around in my, my doofy ways. I hop in as, 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 as I'm allowed to. And as you it, did eh. yesterday. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and it's just a really fun thing to do. And so I, I applaud it. And secretly, it's one of the things I love coming to these things for is to see that. 
I remember when I was in, um, I had the opportunity to go to London for a Comic Con there, and it was all the different fandoms all clashed together. And there was this guy who was dressed up like Thor, like really just done up like Thor. He was a big dude. He had his, you know, his hammer, meal owner. And then there was this other guy who was like a battle tech. He had like the, he was on stilts, and it was like 12, 13 feet tall. And they came right in front of my booth, and I started screaming, "Battle, <laughs> battle!" And then without missing a beat, they both like. Stopped and like got into these battle poses, and this guy pulls this eight foot long like axe, and I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> Kids are freaking out. It's happening, and this was just an event that happened because these two guys were passionate about the characters they were going to inhabit, and they took the time to create these beautifully authentic uh, costumes. And it was it was like the event of the show. It was fantastic. So I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Very cool. If you were to dress in cosplay yourself, who would you be? Oh. uh Jeepers, that's a good question. I've never thought about that. Uh, you know, <laughs> so sometimes I'll, 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 in between like reading scripts and stuff, they're all like very heady and or dark, and so I like to watch cartoons. And um, so uh, I'd either want to be Steven from Steven Universe, little pudgy guy with a little gem in my belly just wandering around, <laughs> or... Uh, I was watching Thundercats recently, and I remembered when I was a kid how I thought Tigra was the coolest mother around. So uh, maybe now that I've cut my hair, I wouldn't be such a good Tigra, but that would be a fun one to do. They have wigs. Wigs? I'm, I'm authentic, man. That's how it is. Me I'd, grow, I'd grow a tail and everything now. But that would, those would be fun things to do. So cartoon characters of that sort. We'll have to get you a Tigra <laughs> costume. <laughs> All right. You wear it at the next Walker Soccer. Yeah, just let me know. I'll make sure to like work out a day or two beforehand. <laughs> exactly. Just a day or two? Wow, that's yeah. good. Well, you know, I'm not that committed. <laughs> so what are you working on? What new projects are coming out? Uh, there's a film I did called The Thinning that'll be uh, coming out later this year. And that's a very exciting sort of dystopian. The world's overpopulated. And each state has figured out its own way to kind of thin the population. And so I play a uh, uh, bit of a villain, bit of a bad guy who administers these tests, sort of like an SAT test. If you fail the SATs, you die. And so no pressure there. No pressure at all. Yeah. Please drop your pencils <laughs> and your lives. Uh, I forgot a number two pencil. No, <laughs> multiple choice. I want to live. <laughs> um, so that's going to be coming out. And that's uh, I've seen bits of it, and it looks phenomenal. Um, very stylishly shot, so I'm excited about that. And then beyond that, I did like two or three features, but I'm not sure when they're going to come out. So that's the next one. So where can people find you on like social networking or social media so that they can find out about these new features that are coming down the road? Uh, I, I am uh, at Trenorland, T-R-A-Y-N-O-R-L-A-N-D, like Disneyland, but cooler. No. Uh, but less nice. But less nice. Yeah, like edgy Disneyland. Uh, it's Trenorland on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, although I've, I've rarely snapped or chatted on it. Very cool. Now, the, the three questions that we have to ask you at the end, okay. very invasive questions, so Oof. are you ready? Uh, yeah, a little conversational lube beforehand. Let's get in there. So, you're on a picnic. What is your go-to picnic food? Oh, ooh, ooh, the desserts, carrot cake. Carrot cake, all right. I didn't see you as a carrot cake guy, but now that you mention it, maybe, yeah, carrot cake. My tastes are surprising, guys. And when you were young, what was your favorite cartoon? Oh, uh, Thundercats and Voltron. Both good choices, excellent choices. And finally, if you had a choice between Batman or Iron Man for president... Who would you vote for? Wow. <laughs> There's a guy dressed as Batman just behind the camera, and he's threatening me with his batarang. I, I can protect you. I'm a captain. Don't worry. There you go. Uh, answer, uh, honestly. Don't, Wonder, let the, don't let the bat. Do you want my honest answer? Your honest answer. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Okay. But she's not running because she's actually from a uh, monarchy, and she's a princess, so she doesn't have to be elected. Uh, we will annex their mascara uh, into the union, and therefore she'll be a naturalized citizen and kick ass. All right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Batman. Sorry, Iron, Iron Man. Wonder Woman is the best. I'm sorry. She, she's she got the nobility. She's got the... Uh, mm -hmm. 
She's got all the experience. So I like yeah, I keep saying that she has all the experience. Like this, <laughs> she has all the experience. I, I love her domestic policies and her foreign policies, and I just really, domestic and foreign. <laughs> her tax plan is just whoa exciting. Captain, come on, Captain. <laughs> that was totally subconscious, though. I can't say it didn't have some merit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, Michael, thank you so much. My pleasure. And everyone, thanks for watching. And as always, have fun and cosplay on.